இந்த மாலினிட்டு ஜூம் நூலாக இணை இணைஞ்சிருக்கும் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கங்கள் ஆஹ் ஜூம் நூலாக இணைஞ்சிருக்கும் வைஎச்சுதன் ஆங்கில மற்றும் பிரெஞ்சு மொழிக்கான விரிவுரையாளர் மற்றும் பெற்றோர்கள் மாணவர்கள் ஆஹ் ஆசிரியர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் நேர வணக்கங்கள் இன்று நாம் வாரந்தோறும் ஜூம் நூடாக அஹ் ஒழுங்கு செய்யப்படும் ஆங்கில சம்பந்த நிகழ்ச்சியில் இணைந்திருக்கின்றோம் ஆங்கில இலக்கியம் நயம் பற்றி எவ்வளவு பேருக்கு தெரியுமோ அதை அதே போல் தெரியாதவர்கள் நினைக்கிறார்கள் ஆஹ் காப்போத்து சாதாரண பயிற்சி எடுத்துக் கொண்டாலும் சரி உயர்தர பயிற்சி எடுத்துக் கொண்டாலும் சரி இப்பாடத்தை தெரிவு செய்யும் மாணவர்களுடைய எண்ணிக்கை மிக குறைவாக காணப்படுகின்றது அதுக்குரிய காரணம் வந்து அது காணப் ஆங்கில இலக்கியம் காணப்படும் சில நம்பிக்கைகள் இப்பாடத்தில் புள்ளி எட்டுவது கடினம் படிப்பது மிக கடினம் என்று ஆனால் மான் அந்த பாடத்தை படித்தவரிடம் கேட்டுப்பதால் தெரியும் இவ்வளவு சுவாரஸ்யமான பாடம் அனுபவித்து படிக்கக்கூடிய பாடம் என்று ஆகவே மாணவர் மத்தியில் ஆங்கில இலக்கியனை அறிவி வளர்க்க வளர்ப்பதற்காக வாரந்தோறும் இந்நிகழ்ச்சி அனுவலும் ஒழுங்கு செய்யப்படுகிறது அந்த வகையில் முதலாவதாக சாகித்ய நபர்களை உம் கேப்ரியல் ஒக்காரா என்னும் அஹ் கவிஞரால் எழுதப்பட்ட வன்சு புனட்ட டைம் என்னும் அஹ் கவிதை கூடிய விளக்கத்தை தருமாறு அழைக்கின்றேன் வன்சு புன டைம் நாங்கள் அநேகமான கவிதைகளை கதைகளில் பார்த்திருப்போம் முன்னோரு காலத்தில் அதே போன்று முன்னோரு காலத்தில் வாழ்ந்த சம் இந்த காலத்தில் வாழும் சமூகம் எப்படி இருக்கின்றது என்பதை பற்றி இதில் கவிஞர் குறிப்பிடுகிறார் முன்னொரு காலத்தில் வாழ்ந்த சமூகம் வந்து அவர்களுடைய நடவடிக்கைகள் வரவேற்பு முறையாக இருந்தாலும் சரி மற்றவருடைய கதைக்கு முறையாக இருந்தாலும் சரி அவருடைய மனதில் இருந்து உணர்ச்சி பூர்வமாக வெளிவந்தது ஆனால் இக்காலத்தை எடுத்து பார்த்தோமானால் சுயநிலைவாதிகளாகவும் சந்தர்ப்பவாதிகளாகவும் காணப்படுகிறார்கள் அனைவருடைய நடத்தைகளும் வந்து ஒரு சம்பிரதாய பூர்வமானதாக காணப்படுகிறதே தவிர மனதில் இருந்து உணர்ச்சி பூர்வமாக வெளி வெளிவருவதாக காணப்படுவதில்லை அவ்வாறாக அஹ் இரண்டு காலகட்டங்களையும் கவிஞர் ஒப்பிடுகின்றார் என்பதை இந்த கவிதையில் பார்த்தோம் Good evening to you all. In this golden moment, I thank my literature, Sir Ajitan, for giving this wonderful chance. In this golden opportunity, I am going to talk about the poem, The Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time is a famous poem, and it was written by Gabriela Okara. Let me see about the writer. He was a Nigerian writer. He has worked as a government official in the broadcasting. So this poem may reflect his own sentiments about the change of the post-colonial African society. Okara was always influenced by the African thoughts, religion, folklore, and also imagery. The African country was ruled by the British. So the poem brings out the cultural conflict between the African society and how the people had been transformed to modern pattern. Then we see the title of the poem, Once Upon Time. We always hear this title, this starting of the poem, that the title is a typical beginning of a fairy tale, as it is related to a kid or further reveals that the speaker wishes a fantasy. This poem is a first person narration poem, and also narrator is nostalgic, that he is living the present by remaining the past. The poem is in a free verse and also broken up to seven stanzas. In each stanza, the poet contrast the present and the past. When we see the first stanza, he mentions son. Maybe he mentions the diction son as his biological son or the younger generation. In the past, the people laughed with their own emotions. But nowadays, he views that the people how now laugh just to showcase a laugh that too with the dark intentions in their hearts. And here the writer has used the technique repetition by the by using the word laugh, which contrasts the, between the differences of post-colonial society of Africa. And when we see the second sensa, in the past, they had, been to, they had been to shake their hands with the two emotions, but now they are looking his empty pocket. It is materialism and selfishness. Now people only think about what the what other person has for them. Here, the empty pocket is a symbol for pure finance. In the third paragraph, the poet talks about fake relationship and of the modernized society. In the past, people welcomed strangers to their houses. The poet has used some quotations of social formula to convey the message that they have already lost their recognition, mainly because they have used without any proper 
sense. They have used the dictions, free at home, come again, goodbye, we like to meet you. However, the, with the changes of the society, people hated their personal life to be disturbed by guests. They want to be alone. This sensor reveals that the poet's nostalgic feeling about his discussion of the relationships. In the fourth paragraph, the poet shows how the smile has been branded according to the different social occasions, that they have been changed like home faces, office face, street face, host face, and also cocktail face. The smiles have, should be come from the heart as a true one, but here they have fixed on the mask. Previously, the speaker criticized such attitudes of the society of Africa. But in the fifth paragraph, he has shaped himself in the society's order. His inner mind wants to say goodbye, good riddance, but his mouth won't always say glad to see you. Here the element of sarcasm runs deeper. In the sixth stanza, he shows his nostalgic feelings of his past life and his dissatisfactions of present at present in the order to survive. Here he has used an effective metaphor by the diction muting thing, which is deeply set to the goal, good values submerged by the Western norms. He wants to be a child again, like his son, but real and relearn the art of innocence and pure happiness. As everyone knows, a child, a child at young age is true to their emotions when they grew in the society. They have to change according to society. Most people love to live in the past, but uh, as poem reveals, it is a fantasy. It is very hard to relive the past, but to adapt the present social atmosphere, whether one likes it or not. From this poem, some several themes are reflected, and the main theme of this poem is fake expressions was versus two expressions. And there are some extra themes reflected in the poem. They are how the society changes and capitalism. Let me see the main theme of this poem. The poet has dealt with fake expressions versus two expressions. For example, he describes in a character society, they don't smile honestly, but the smile is only a grain showing a teeth. So the modern society people use the common formula to live in this society. But we can change the past. It's the reality of the life. We can't, we, we should accept the present and we have to change the, change ourselves to be a survivor. So thanks for hearing me. Serapan Vilakatani Varangi, Shaitan of Ragnaji Tritukundal, at the Haruna Via Vilkale, Kumar Sanga Kadavaral, Codin County Lecture in Pesapeta, Long Retak Petty, Pesel Kalkinjin, Kumar Sanga Kara, and every committee room, or the cricket period, Arjuna Ranadunga Rudi Talamitu Tripura, Ilangi cricket and ye, Ulaka Tikur Tikat, your nature and the reader. Our Giraka Matamel Lama, Marida Mianam Gunda, Sir and the Manila Home Paradangal Kanapatula, Pulpaha Verudi, Old Vikalati Pregan of Bartomar, Pelver Samu Savigal Livatina, in the Uri Pagil Vande, Aver Marudi, Cricket Dani Nerum, Pakistani Lahu and Trade Tigas and the Bodang and Adepeja, or Thiri was a Tapu Petikula, Thiri Taku Petia, Vodina Nam Marindirpum, Ilangi Ranama, the Unmil Kudon. April with the Taku, Avaran or Taku, Avakal Midi, Nadata Petapodu, Avaran Marinelli, Avakalin Dagger, Alan Piraka Rudi, Arodi Nadati Uvar in the Uvar, not to Petalla, however, Kana Petal in the Petti, Vaka the Vavalang with Maran and the Uriel Kinchi. Lahur attack by Kumar Shangakara. Uh, Lahore attack is an extract from Kumar Shankar's Kalim Kautun lecture, which was delivered on 5th June 2011 at Lodz, which mesmerized the world by its honesty and patriotism. The world speaks about the love for cricket and fear for violence. Uh, Kumar Shankar nicely and humanly orated this prose. It shows that the good orator can be a good leader. And Chandakara considered that he was fortunate because he never experienced the violence in first hand. 
It's because he was never in the wrong place at the wrong time. He pointed that the day-to-day -day activities like schooling of children and working of people continued in Kalambu in spite of occasional bomb explosions. As a result, people also continued playing cricket as usual without any disturbance. Uh, nevertheless, the speaker thrown the contract between city life and Versoon. The people who were in the Versoon had to be alert on, on time in order to avoid bullets, shells, mines, and grenades for their survival. Kumar Shankar expressed his uh, sympathy and compassion for such people who lived by anticipating death. Then orator described his horrible experience in Lahore, which he had to undergo first time in his life, lifetime. And then Shankar drawn the attention of the audience to brief the test played with Pakistan. The match was played at the Gadazi Stadium in Pakistan. Narrator said that the first test played comfortable at the National Stadium of the Karachi without any troubles. And the second test also like that. We were anticipating the hard day of toil for the bowler. It shows that as a speaker, as, as a sporter, they, uh, they were not concerned about the terrorist activities in the country but they had drawn more attention to their play. Uh, speakers further say that after the match, they were in the bus and blowed many jokes. At the time, uh, fast bowlers were complaining loudly and, and then Shankar indicates that Tilan complained that his back was nearly breaking point. And he joked that the bomb would go off so they, they could all leave Lahore and go back home. And in the next line, speaker mentioned they heard the sound like firecrackers going off. They all had been hidden inside the bus because there was no way to escape. By pointing this event, orator portrays the immediacy of the event. Next, the speaker throws the attention of the audience to reveal the personal response of the fellow cricketers at that horrible minute. Uh, by telling the cricketers' names, Kumar Shankara asked the authenticity and flavor of Sri Lanka. He pointed that Mahela shouted that his chin, wo chin was injured. And he further said that Tilan groaned as a bullet hit him in the back of his thigh. Uh, by mentioning these events, orator portrays the deadly fear and horror in the, inside the bus. As I turned my head to look at him, I felt something whip past my ear and a bullet cut into, into the side of the seat, the exact spot where my head had been a few seconds earlier. And it is sentimental because it is related to the orator's life and it reminds us. Even luck has, luck has a strong impact in our life. Shankara convinced the audience that Paravidana was the most serious victim of the terrorist, terrorism. We can visualize and imagine, imagine the critical situation when the speaker reveals how Paravidana shouted. Uh, I have been hit. Moreover, his blood check test also indicates the sign of seriousness. And the orator further said that perhaps the outside situation of the terrorist attack could have controlled and the bus started moving. And Dilshan voice could be heard asking the driver, try drive. It shows the clear thinking of Dilshan. And the speaker mentioned that, that this uh, incident made them realize the suffering of his fellow Sri Lankans who experienced the horrors of war and violence with courage and selflessness was expressed with patriotic sentiment. Uh, we were shot at, grenades were thrown at us, we were injured, and we were not caught, we were not down at all. It shows the cricketers' optimistic, optimistic thinking and a, and a strong heart. Um, and the speaker further said that they had any responsibility to appear before the media interviews, but they faced it without being too much emotional. And finally, in the latter part of the floor, Shankar highlighted on the talk he had with the soldier at the checkpoint after his arrival from Pakistan. Uh, and Shankar told him that uh, they could experience what the soldiers experience every day within a few minutes. And the soldiers reply for the Shankar's question shows the uh, humble and love of the people towards the cricketers. And we can consider the soldier as a humble personality. And moreover, Shankar said that this is the love and respect he's getting from Sri Lanka. According to this rule, we can consider Shankar as a great personality. Thank you for hearing.
நமக்கு அது மற்றும் அவருடைய சிறந்த குணவியல்கள் பற்றி கூறிய அறநோயர்களுக்கு நன்றி தெரிவித்துக் கொண்டு அடுத்ததாக வெள்ளி அவர்களை அஹ் அல்பர்ட் லோட் டென்னிசன் என்னும் கவிஞரால் எழுதப்பட்ட கழுகு பற்றி ஒரு கவிதையை பற்றி கூற வருமாறு அழைக்கின்றேன் கதையை பற்றி எல்லோருக்குமே அதிகமாக தெரிந்திருக்கும் நாங்கள் இலகுவில் காண முடியாத ஒரு பறவை கழுகு பார்வை என்று கூறுவார் அல்லது ஒரு புத்து குருமைக்க கூடாதுன்னு ஓவிப்பார்கள் ஒரு கழுகையை நாம் எடுத்து கொண்டோமானால் அவனுடைய தோற்றமே மிகவும் ஒரு மற்றவர்களை பயமுறுத்தும் ரீதியாக இருக்கும் அவ்வாறான ஒரு கழுகு கழுகின் அதனுடைய தோற்றம் பற்றியும் அது இக்காலத்தில் காணப்படுகிற சமூகத்தில் இக்கால சமூகத்தில் காணப்படுகின்ற மனிதர்களோடு எவ்வாறு தொடர்புகின்றது என்பதை பற்றியும் கூற வருமாறு வேள்னியவர்களை அழைக்கின்றேன் Good evening everybody today i on this great evening i'm going to explain about you uh, explain you about the poem uh, the eagle uh, this this poem is simply written by six lines and it was written by uh, the reputed poet alfred mortensen and if we see this poem uh, it may seems like it has just six lines but if we go through this into deep uh, it has a very deep and meaningful lines So if we see this poem, in the first line he slaps the crack with crooked hands. Here, you know, the writer used the word he to describe the eagle. Uh, you all know that eagle is not just a bird we can see so easily. So it's a predator. So we have to give some build up to uh, its character. So the writer used uh, the word he to <clears throat> the word he to describe it, and he personified the eagle as a man. and the adjective and the adjective crooked hands uh, it represents uh, the eagle's dishonesty and if you see the second line close to the sun in lonely lands here uh, see the line close to the sun in lonely lands uh, it may seems like uh, the the place where the eagle seated may seems like a very high place of course it's a hyperbolic effect because no one can reach uh, the sun but the writer used this line uh, to represents the height of the eagle's place so you know uh, we can't get uh, that place so much easily uh, eagle has a unique behavior that it can even fly in the rain, apart from rain so beyond the clouds so the writer uh, want to uh, remind us that eagle can can will not stay in a normal place where the sparrows stay Uh, and in the third line ringed with the azure world he stands i want to tell you something that uh, this poem may seems like a poetry view uh, if we see this if we read this in a normal way it may seems like a mind view observation of nature uh, in the poet's view but it has three themes like um, poetic view a politic view and a religious view so ringed with the azure world he stands and you know eagles used to ring when it see uh, its prey so the writer mentions uh, that eagle is suddenly so prey and he stands means uh, eagle used to uh, do unusual thing because if we see a sparrow we can understand the sparrow is afraid the sparrow is uh, searching for some prey but you can't uh, you can uh, see uh, in the eagle in that view because uh, we any any creatures can't uh, identify what the eagle is going to do so the writer mentions this in the third line and in the second stanza the brinkle sea beneath him crawls uh, it represents uh, the brinkle sea of course it's a metaphor and uh, the beneath him crawls means as i said to you before the eagle is already in high place so if you see the eagle uh, uh, the sea is just a wrinkle thing for him because uh, any creatures can be afraid of sea but uh, for the eagle it seems like a just a wrinkle thing means it's a, just a usual thing for the eagle and he watches from his mountain walls as i said uh, eagle is a symbol of uh, brave and uh, justice and also the you know the the most uh, the most powerful country in the uh, worldwide the U- united states of america uh, this country used this bird as a symbol um, to tell the other countries that they are predators and they are unbeatable so as well as eagle is unbeatable in nature creatures in a politic way america is unbeatable and that's why the writer mentions it and he watches from his mountain wall it depicts 
uh, you know, in, in Roman and Greek mythology, the mountain walls uh, represents uh, the place of and the palace of the god Sur. Uh, you know, the, if for Hindus, uh, Lord Shiva is the best, and likewise for Roman people, um, the god Zeus uh, is the best god, and he is the god of thunderbolt. So the writer mentioned this in the uh, last stanza that, and like a thunderbolt, he falls. It uh, it has both three mean three themes included because this is the most highlighted line in this poem because the thunderbolt like thunderbolt he falls it may represent the eagle as it sees its prey so it went through down to a catch its prey and in a politic view it, it represents the united states of america uh, so it uh, stands for the brave and uh, justice and dishonesty of the country and in a religious way, the god Zeus, as I said, the god Zeus has the power of thunderbolt and he is the god of thunder. So uh, we can see this in this way too. So Alfred Lord Tennyson includes all these three themes in just six lines. So I think this poem has a unique feel because any poem can not, uh, it's not easy to include the three various themes in just in six lines. So this poem is very useful in a poetic way or in a political way and a religious way too. Thank you for hearing that. Yaralmi Villa Mudia do Parabe, Huga, the Kayu Kana, Kalinana Printani Pati, Siri Vulakatini Valangia, Burni America, Tanji Tavitakundu, Adaka Mirmida Averkali, Lagur Jack Petty, a male Muru Srin the Vulaka de Valangur Mara Likinji. Good evening to you all. I am going to do a uh, on Lahu attack. The Lahu attack comes under the prose passage uh, in an extract of, from Akmar Sangakara, uh, Colin Hockery lecture delivered on 5th of July 2011. Uh, uh, Colin Hockery was a batsman and the bowler who played cricket uh, uh, for the England team during uh, 1954 to 1975. Um, the Lahore attack was one of the non-fiction story, the speech delivered by Kumar Sangakara. Um, in his speech, uh, he focused uh, on our history, uh, uh, cultures, and opportunities of the Sri Lankan team and uh, uh, terrorist attack on Sri Lankan cricket team in a bus in Lahore, uh, Pakistan. As a cricketer, Kumar Sangakara was one of the most important uh, uh, member of this uh, uh, of the team because he is a leader of this uh, team. He is a left-hand batsman and the uh, wicket player. He ranked as uh, number one test best man in the world. Uh, he also describes his um, experience that he never experienced any violence in Sri Lanka during the war time. Uh, the, uh, in Colombo, life was really, really normal in the other part of the country. The people were, were uh, defense of their motherlands uh, so that he had a, a, a great uh, sympathy and compassion uh, for the for them. The Lahore attack took place uh, on the 3rd of March 2009 in Lahore, Pakistan when the cricket uh, team was on their uh, on the way to play the uh, the third day, uh, second March, uh, the bus was fired by uh, upon, uh, fired upon by, by uh, twelve gunmen. His speech clearly shows uh, the passion for Sri Lanka and uh, spe uh, and the love and respect for its people. Uh, as a uh, captain, his mentality is uh, really strong. In his speech, he. Uh, 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 spoke of a uh, 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 mental uh, shared passion, collective uh, collective joy, and ambitions of Sri Lankans. Uh, he brings a, a uh, brings in a conversation that he had uh, uh, with a soldier at the checkpoint in Colombo just uh, just a week after his uh, his return uh, from uh, Pakistan, and uh, also the soldier uh, said. Uh, Sangakara, uh, Sangakara uh, 
uh, as a, a hero, it uh, shows that the cricketers are respect of uh, Sri Lanka. So Sangakara's speech uh, uh, show uh, he faced uh, the situations and the emotional uh, impact of the event of the cricket. Uh, uh, the extract uh, uh, further reveals the features of the good cricket player as well as uh, the um, good leader. Moreover, it reveals uh, the qualities of Sangakara as a great Sri Lankan, uh, Sri Lankan and the great humanist uh, of the world. Thank you. In the Paudil, my son Garaval, we are Sri Lankans and we are tough and to Kuriraro, Kurinjaro, the good end in a link in the reading of our own to Patalomo, other poor end in the Kurikondu. At the other, Jasmine Gunaragna in Sri Lankan Kamira at the Patel, the big match. 1983 <laughs> As he had done it in our Makal Ubar Kula Pamadikin, other people, Ubar and Ubar Tamil Makal Mid, Kodumi, Danmur will make called up in the petty, either like a good pudular, not in Irhal Tumland, Kulakalin, Hilikur Purum, Avar and Lenirkal in the Nakal within Bose, I reckon a kill contributed by the other Sally, any very committee, Aloruha, Tekiasia win, Mikapiri of Putta Salia, Koda in the day, other in the Naka Calavera Kalatil, Alu would a reuta padin the Lavade, um, Calavera Kalurudi Mukio Nokuma in the Tam Nakal in Udia, Adia at the Alipazan, Avare Ubar Rudi Adia at the Alipel Kanamu, Mutual Milkola Patel, Arkan Umia and a Karanangalin. I will tell Good day to you all. Today I would like to speak about uh, Big Match 1983. The poem Big Match 1983 was written by Jasmine Gunaritne, a Sri Lankan poetess who has received international fame as a poetess. In this poem, the poetess gives an analytical and satirical view of the communal rights of 1983 in Sri Lanka. The hatredness between the Sinhalese and Tamils due to language, race, and religion resulted in violence in 1983. Violence in the form of fire, as in killing, looting, etc., was common, especially in places where Tamils lived among the singers. The big match is a metaphor. The poise gives two meanings associated with the term. One of them is an annual big match played uh, between two leading schools. Uh, big match are very popular in Sri Lanka and many other countries where cricket is played. The other meaning given from the term big match is a stick of a box of matches which is used to ignite the fire. These two meanings are brought out together very vividly to convey the message of the poem. The violence of 1983 can be defined as an encounter between the two major ethnic groups in Sri Lanka. The fire of hatred turned to an actual conflagration. Uh, most of the residents, properties, shops, and houses were set on uh, fire. Mobs would have used bigger matchsticks uh, for this job. As the communal disturbance took place in July 1983, it's called Black July. It was a clash between the Sri Lankan army and the militants in the north. Uh, the poetess attempts to trace the true causes of the flames. Uh, she presents the situation and analyzes the socio-political factors behind this situation. Uh, rulers of the country or the politician didn't take any immediate action to control the violence. The poetess is worried about the human relationship, national harmony, and reconciliation. 
the pointer starts the poem with the uh, sensational headlines of the newspaper, flesh point in paradise and uh, racial pot boils over. Uh, these headlines frighten the tourists and they cancel their booking and return home. A boy could be an expatriate who has come back to Sri Lanka from the city Toronto in Canada. His purpose of return to the native country is to find out his lost roots, uh, such as family members, relations, and ancestors who belong to his ethnic and cultural origin. However, the newspaper headlines over the racial violence and the situation in the North would have compelled him to go back to Canada, uh, where he lives at present by thinking that Toronto would be quite romantic for his purposes. Uh, it is evident that these newspaper headlines Add uh, fuel to uh, fuel to the increasing racial fire. Uh, she continues to trace the history of the Big March. The landmarks of this post-colonial political situation of Sri Lanka are presented in the significant years of the history of Sri Lanka. Uh, we gained independence in 1948 from the British Crown. In 1956, Singala only act was passed 